I'm going to show you how to screen print on some safety jackets. Coming up. Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. If you find it helpful, hit that bell notifications. That way you get updates next time we upload a video. Let's go ahead and dive right into this tutorial. So here are the jackets that we are going to print on. They're pretty expensive. We're only doing five of them, but they're $300 a pop. So we can't mess this up. We're going to use a low cure ink in which this is going to be a little bit of a review. We're going to use CCI's low cure black ink. So let's go ahead and mock these things up, put one on press, line our film up, and expose our screens and print these things. All right, we're going to use our little manual press for this particular job. And I am just going to load this thing up all the way until the hood portion of this jacket kind of falls into place. Now this does have a liner which we're going to take out, but I'm just going to position my art uh, probably right about here. I'm going to give myself maybe about an inch, inch and a half down from the seam. We'll just grab our film and then our screen and position things. Here is about where I'm gonna position this print. Again, I don't wanna to get too close to this because then it can cause issues. With it actually kind of building up here at the top, we only have one shot at doing this. You know, I'll kind of walk you through the way I would go about doing it. So I think that's about good. And I'm just going to take a little bit of scotch tape. Let's kind of lightly tape this down. What's up, Michelle? Now that we have our film kind of place where we want it, just going to go ahead and grab a screen real quick. I am using a, a higher mesh, so I don't want to put down too much ink and end up ruining this jacket. So I'm gonna just kind of take it nice and easy. If I have to hit things twice, then so be it. But I'd rather put a little less ink and have to hit it again than put way too much ink down. So 110 is just not even something I would even consider for something like this. And yes, this screen is unexposed and I am out in the daylight. Be sure to check out my video here or here, one of these corners on my thoughts about a dark room. The screen's not gonna expose that fast sitting out, even though it's exposing a little bit. Anyways, let's get back to it. All right, we got our film position. Just gonna bring down one of my print heads, whichever one will stay down. I guess that's not gonna stay down, but I'm just gonna take my screen here. Position it in there. I'm just gonna lightly clamp it down. And so the next thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of tape lift this up and apply some to the bottom side of this piece of film. This tape really didn't hold it too well on these jackets so it should just grab pretty easily. I'm gonna lower my print head down and there we go. Alright let's take this over to the exposure unit. Alright I'm gonna clean my exposure unit real quick just to make sure we got all dust and anything on here that could put some pinholes in there because something tells me these jackets are really not going to favor pinholes. So I'm gonna make sure this is as clean as possible. And before we go to print, we'll do some test prints. Make sure all our pinholes are, are taped off. However, I'm gonna go ahead and toss the screen on the exposure unit and we'll go ahead and expose it for three minutes. Okay, our screen is nice and exposed. Let's go ahead and toss it in the washout booth. I'm gonna 
take my film off, set it aside, and we're just gonna do our, our usual kind of washout method. And rinse one side, the other, just kind of keeping both the sides wet constantly. And that will help it fall out evenly. Now that our image is starting to fall out, what I'm going to do is just spray it from our print side or our shirt side and just kind of spray it out somewhat forcefully, just water hose pressure. There we go, our image is nice and washed out. I'm gonna give the back side just a little bit of a shower, just kind of lightly. Just to kind of get rid of some of that unexposed emulsion. Now let's go ahead and set this outside so that way it can kind of post harden in the sun. Even though there's not a whole lot of sun out today, but let's go ahead and do that. While this thing is drying, I am going to get on some other things like reclaiming some screens. Yep, pretty cloudy today. Not a whole lot of sunshine to speak of. So it'll probably take a minute for it to dry. Got some screens reclaimed. Looks like our screen is just about dry. The sun actually came out. My next step is to look for pinholes. I'm going to tape up the screen and then I'm just going to take it one jacket at a time. I have to remove the liners out of the jacket so that way we can make sure the jacket holds down nicely, doesn't move. And we're going to have to adjust our conveyor dryer oven height, so the, the height of the actual element itself and the temperature. We're going to use a low cure ink as I had mentioned and we're going to have to do a little bit of trial and error kind of uh i'd rather it be under cured than scorching these jackets so we're trying to shoot for around 265 so let's go ahead and do all that in order to raise my heating element at this current moment set at four inches i'm going to raise it all the way up to eight inches and there's two of these I'm going to raise this other one up as well now I'm going to raise these doors up just to make sure our jackets don't touch anything. These are some pretty thick jackets. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side as well. Now I'm going to turn my oven on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this, rather than it being a thousand degrees, I think I'll take it down to maybe 800. That tends to be a pretty good spot for low cure inks. All right, we'll let this warm up while we tape the screen off. By the way, this PMI tape dispenser, I do like to use PMI tape because it, it releases really well, holds well, doesn't leave any tack when you go to reclaim and this tape cutter, whatever you want to call it, it's pretty awesome. It's, pretty, it's fairly inexpensive. I'll leave a link down below in the description as to where you can find this thing, but it's come in quite handy. I used to use scissors, but this has saved a lot of time. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my screen and just kind of hold it up towards the light. Make sure I don't have any pinholes. I do see a couple of pinholes and there is some information from the screen for my film that I need to tape off. So just a, a few things to tape off. 
By the way, a cool little trick is you can actually use some emulsion, rub the emulsion on the screen. For me, this is just quicker, cleaner, a little more simple, and it gets the job done. All right, I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and set this on press. The placement of our image, I've already kind of predetermined that a little earlier. So I'm going to take my screen, just gonna set it inside the press. And I do have a center mark going down the middle of my palette, underneath my palette tape. I got some fresh palette tape down, some fresh tack and all that. And I'm just going to line up my center marks with my center line on my press. You may or may not be able to see it, but there is a line here that I just drew with pen, very light mark. Get this thing nice and straight. So we're just gonna take our center marks here and get everything all lined up. Now that I have everything all lined up, I'm just going to clamp this down. And I am using a little bit more off contact than usual. And what off contact is the distance between your screen and your actual palette. So as you can see here, as I press down, we got quite a bit and we want that because these jackets are, are fairly thick. I may come down on the off contact just a little bit, but I'm going to set a jacket on the press and then just kind of see where we're at. But first we have to remove those liners. So here is the first jacket that we are going to print. There is this liner on the inside, very nicely tucked away. Then we got a little button here. Looks like there is a little button on the inside as well. Don't want to tear these things up, so I just kind of gently pulled. Gonna undo these buttons. And there we go. As to not to mix these things up, I am going to just kind of do these one at a time. Just gonna take my time because these things are fairly expensive. Now at this point, uh, it does look like we have to do some sort of hold down method because there's a liner on the inside of this, so um, we'll have to figure that out. We might have to use some clothes pins or something. Or maybe even uh, a string, but we shall see. All right, we're gonna load up our first jacket. I'm just gonna make sure things aren't getting in the way of these wheels. And I'm just gonna center things up according to this pocket. Tuck things under. And I may have to figure a way to kind of clamp this thing down. But let's see where our graphic is going to land first. Probably should have moved the graphic a little higher up, but can compensate for that by moving this whole thing down. Ah yes, I had lined it up to the bottom of the neck when I should have lined it up. This part falling off the edge of the, the palette, but not a big deal. As long as we can get everything nice and flat everything will go according to plan so i'm just kind of filling out making sure that it is a nice flat surface to print on all right okay now i have the jacket just a little too low just a little bit without that liner in there it doesn't make a difference so let's see where we're at here all right, I think that's about perfect. Might pull it down just a little bit more. All right, there you go. Maybe a couple fingers down. Make sure it's nice and straight. Oh my lord. And because my screen is a little filthy, got some ink on there. So let's clean that up first. So I got a paper towel with a little bit of blowout fluid. 
one of the things about these you got to be very careful about keeping your hands clean so I think I'll keep this to the side just so I can clean my hands okay we're still looking good make sure my hands are nice and clean I'm gonna flatten this thing out I think I might end up doing a push print and hitting it a couple times soon these things are always a little tricky uh, without a, a, a jacket hold down but we'll make it work so what we're going to use is CCI's low temperature cure shadow black plastol ink got this at the trade show so we'll see how this does ultimately you want to use a, a low cure ink like this something you don't want to like really you need that low temperature so you're not going to ruin the garment and this will work just fine well, let's see how it goes We got our ink all loaded up. I'm gonna check this one more time, making sure my hands are nice and clean. Get this nice and flat. And we're just gonna hit it a couple times and slowly release this. Gonna really flood that ink into the stencil. Use a fairly upright position. Just kind of looking for it to clear the screen. Let's see what we got. There we go. That looks pretty darn good to me. Nothing seemed to move anywhere. Didn't flood it too much. Now the fun part is getting it off of the pallet and onto the conveyor without making a mess. All right, let's see if we can get this off without damaging our goods. I feel like we're hung up on something. Ah, yes. Got one of those stupid tie straps hooked on the press itself. Now, I'm going to carefully lay this thing down. Let's see what I'm talking about here. I think I pulled the, the hood out. Pull this thing over. Careful not to touch the graphic. And then I'm going to take my temp gun and make sure that I'm not getting too hot with this. So, Shannon! Come here! I need your help with this video! What? Hold this real quick. Make sure this doesn't move. Quick, 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 quick. quick. Just, put, just, yeah! it doesn't matter. Just hold this. Hold it. Do not touch that ink. I'm not going to touch the ink. Why would I touch the ink? All right, let her rip, take her chip. All right, so here it is coming down and I'm going to make sure this thing doesn't get too hot. It's like we're at about 170, 195, 215, 245, 257. So we got up to 280, that's not too bad. And I'm gonna let this just kind of cool down before I touch it and kind of do any kind of testing. I gave the instructions another once over. It's 270 for two to three minutes optimally. And I think I'm gonna run this through just one more time just to be sure. All right, send her back through. As you can see, we're, we got plenty of clearance here. Going at a, a fairly slow speed. Okay, that looks pretty good. Feels nice too. It's nice and soft. All right, it's cooled down. As you can see, it looks quite nice. It's nicely cured. The, the print feels quite nice. I think it came out quite great. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I've got four more of these things to do. I need to throw this liner back in. And fingers crossed, one of these moves and they all come out just as well as this. Now that we have our first jacket printed, one of the things that you will run into, kind of really trying to figure out where your print will go. If you've cleared your screen well enough, then 
chances are you can see through the screen. I wouldn't recommend putting it all the way down. You just kind of use your fingers as a guide. Uh, looks like we're a little too close to the flap. And I can kind of see my finger through the screen or you can kind of push up into the screen to just get like some sort of indication as to where everything is at. And for the most part after that, I mean, you're just gonna have to kind of really just kind of square things up to your palette and kind of hope for the best. All right, I think we're good. I'm just going to make sure I got this nice and flat. So if you have any creases or anything like that in your, your liner underneath this, then definitely going, going to uh, run into some issues, so. All right, there we go. Number two, see what we got. I'm gonna flood it really well. Kind of push that ink, pre-push it through the stencil. And I'm just going to just really make sure I clear this screen nicely. All right, hopefully that got it. And there we go, looks pretty good. And run this through the conveyor and do the other three. So I gotta complete this job. <laughs> All right, the last one is coming down the conveyor. Printed them without any kind of hitch mistake. It's very difficult. It's pretty close to the print touching itself on this one. I need to run this one back through one more time, but we are all finished and I just need to put the liners back in. Well, I have them all finished up, packed away, got the liners back in them. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. If you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. Go out there with this new found knowledge, make you some safety jacket cells, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.